Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. Today I bring you one of my favourite lady TV presenters, who is known for travelling the world and she has a classic car. Along with a guy that's well known around the Geelong area of Victoria with his cars in this week's Classic Restos on the road. In an undisclosed location in regional Victoria resides one of the most effervescent and glowing TV personalities, and that would be Katrina Roundtree. Frequently travelling Australia and different parts of the world for her job, which I can certainly appreciate, there's nothing better than some downtime at home with many hundreds of picturesque acres. In this case, not only is Katrina a well-rounded traveller with a mountain of experience, she is also a car girl. So this, we just have to see. What a special segment this is. Hello, Katrina Roundtree. Hello, Fletch. How are you? Welcome what? to the farm. Thank you so much. This is beautiful here. Oh, it's so lovely. We are a wonderful sheep and grain property, very proud merino wool growers. And yes, we, we adore where we live, but it's all a bit new for me, really. I grew up in the city and I accidentally fell in love with a farmer. <laughs> Big hands. You're completely surrounded with nothing but scenery. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, if you ask my husband, he would say that he's surrounded by nothing but work. <laughs> His to-do list is so huge. But what's been quite wonderful for me is that now I've been able to turn this into my studio, in a sense. So as, as many people know, I've been a part of Getaway for now 25 years. And I thought moving here, I had killed my career. And my boss just said, as long as you can get to an airport, I don't care where you live. And through COVID, uh, I basically just just filmed in the garden constantly and uh, I'm just very grateful for where I live. Katrina, this is a very uh, special segment uh, apart from the opportunity of, um, of interviewing your good self. You've got a very special car beside us here. It's been in your family since day one, your father's car and to find out that you're a car girl, <laughs> that's also yes. another accolade as well. Oh, that's a lovely thing to say, and I, I know that I'm I'm speaking to my own here. Um, I am from a long line of car lovers. Um, I'm the youngest of four children, and I just know a lot of people can relate to this story. So I grew up with my dad taking us to car shows, and one day, one day, we would go to car auctions as well. We always had an appreciation of cars with character. Let's say that much. Um, this beautiful baby here. So I, I must say that it was my great uncle, um, Cam. He drove this beautiful Jaguar out of the showroom in 1965 and it was his pride and joy. And of course, he had a beautiful relationship with my dad because they shared this love of cars. And when Uncle Cam passed away, he gave it to my dad. And when my father became uh, sick with cancer, let me see, around about nine, eight or nine years ago, I thought oh, maybe we can have this as a project together because we all adored our cars. We started to do this up. First thing, power steering. I hope that's okay to say. We did the most beautiful um, paintwork. Anyway, I just, I just love it. And unfortunately, my dad passed away as we were restoring the car. And... And when I drive the car now, it is as though my dad is just giving me a big hug. And I still have the sheepskin covers um, that my, my great uncle put onto um, the car. There's a lot. I've, I've, I've kept the interior. A lot of people who are into car restoration go, oh, you should do this, you should do that. But it's, that's a part of my family and, and certainly my dad. Isn't that beautiful? That's what this is about. Now, the car in its entirety as well, uh, 
a la original when we look inside mm. that beautiful leather interior it's worn but it, that's nice because that's it, it's that's representing the age of the car it's uh, the condition of it is outstanding for its age this particular model running from 63 to 1968 they made just over 15,000 of these of these Did jags hmm <laughs> I'm learning something here as well. You're totally showing off. <laughs> yeah. So what I love about it is uh, the way it's been kept. Um, it's uh, It's been a minimal owner car, and, and you can tell by looking at that. You can always tell the cars that have had lots of owners, and that yes. hasn't happened here. Well, I, I know that uh, for me, my, my first car, uh, which my dad told me to get, um, I... I um, I wanted a, a big old Holden, but I was working in Crow's Nest in the city, in Sydney, on a show called Wonderworld at the time. And he said, you can't have a big car like that. And so he encouraged me to buy a little Mini. And then I ended up getting a Cooper S. And I, I knew the value was in keeping it original. As much as you want to have these personality additions, um, respectfully, if, if, you, if you have your car as an investment, um, keep original. Um, and I kept that, that Cooper S um, original Mini and Moke World Harboard once again. Um, but with this baby, I knew that I, I, I had to keep it as close to what, um, close to how Cam drove it out of that, um, out of that showroom. Uh, equally, it is a part of the the personality of the car because I know that some people would would want to retouch everything but that's exactly how Cam had those seats. Yeah, it's, it's a time capsule. Um, me, yes. So over the time mechanically has a lot been done to the car over, over the time? Yeah oh, it, well it, it has with me. Um, oh my gosh you'd, you'd so understand this but the way that my dad treated it was like like a baby. I'm gonna say this one funny line when I drove it out of the mechanic, someone said, ah, you've got a, a, an old Jag. It's like having the mistress that never puts out. <laughs> Which my dad would kill me for saying. But the truth is, is that, yeah, it's yeah. it's really challenging having having this car and, and having a car with character, as we say. And, and I will admit, I am so blessed that I have married a farmer that also loves cars. And I, I get really nervous when I'm driving it. Yeah. Talk about uh, opposite ends, though. We've, we've got the farmer. We've got James, who loves his Holdens, and he haps, happens to be so good as a shearer as well. And looking after those rams down there, wow, that's a story for another oh, day. Yeah. Uh, and here you are with the Jag. So uh, talk about a, a, a contrast of brands. Um, and I love the way you've got the place set up here because it's so, talking of contrast, in with the buildings and the way that it's set up here. Katrina, it's almost like as though we're in some part of the UK, seeing the Jag here, the building next to us here. Um, it's just wonderful. It, it just must make you feel so more at one with the vehicle, with your environment. Well, I suppose what's lovely is I mentioned the fact that I've, I've married into a, a family that has a deep appreciation um, for beautiful, beautiful cars. Katrina. On that note, I would like to thank you so much for catching up today at your place. It's been absolutely wonderful and featuring your father's magnificent Jaguar. Fletch, thank you so much for coming to the farm. You can see it's been my pleasure because I really cannot stop talking about our beautiful cars. There's so much to see and do. And you make a nice coffee as well. I do. Makona, freeze-dried. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Katrina. Pleasure. Driving the car for me is really just like like getting a big hug from my dad. I remember so clearly when I first drove it away from the mechanic after I'd had it restored, I was so terrified of something going wrong and the mechanic said, you've just got to breathe. You've just got to, got to breathe. I was terrified. Um, I have to admit, I do get quite nervous driving the car because I can just hear my dad's voice around me the whole time. Don't slam the door. Don't slam the door. Careful the car, careful the car. <laughs> So it, it's full of memories, but I, I, I have to admit I'm, I'm on tender hooks. That said, when you do drive it um, and, and people wave at you when you're in the car, um, I'm so proud of it. I actually, I remember once um, taking it out on a hot summer's day and I couldn't get it to start again in the school playground. I was so 
wow, I'll take to the school playground. And I couldn't get started again. And when uh, my husband turned up, he said, it's an English car. You know she doesn't like the sun. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to honour my family by showing you our, our love, really. Not just our car, but our great love. And I just know that all of my family will be so proud that Fletch has been to the farm. From an early age, I knew some cars were a statement of style and elegance. This is my SL63, my most prized possession. Friends say it's more like an obsession. It's my car and I absolutely love it. I'm a motoring enthusiast and Shannon's is my insurance company. Shannon shares your passion. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Welcome back. Isn't Katrina absolutely delightful? And it's wonderful to see that she enjoys her classics. It's time now for a guy that's been around his Holdens for many years. He's local around the Geelong area. Time to meet Kevin Hooper, a Holden legend. Kev's a great bloke that calls a spade a spade. Ex-military veteran, good at his job and taking care of not one E.H. Holden, but two. Now, Kevin owns a very unique E.H. Ute, and you'll find out more about that soon. But first, it's his trusty E.H. Sedan. Well, the car over my left shoulder here, personalised registration Aussie 6. It is my pride and joy, and I probably do love it more than my firstborn. I've, um, I've actually owned it twice. It was a deceased estates car in Canberra when we first got it the first time, where it sat in a garage for 26 years before the old lady passed away and the family came in to clean out the shed. Nobody knew it was actually in there. They got a locksmith in to break into the garage covered in boxes, dunas, blankets, and bit by bit they uncovered it, and just like opening up a pharaoh's tomb, I suppose, there it was sitting there. They've grabbed the Land Cruiser, skull dragged it out. Nobody wanted it, so he's dragged it down to the corner of the local um, car park from where they live in Canberra and put for sale on the windscreen. About half an hour later, my wife and I were driving home from Canberra, and we saw it. And I perked up and said to my wife, can I have it, can I have it? She said no. About 45 minutes later, old mate that in the Land Cruiser was dragging it into my driveway. <laughs> Took a while to get it going. Um, and it started to be driven as my daily driver in Canberra. We couldn't afford to give it the love it needed, so we had to say goodbye to it and we sold it. Under the proviso that the guy I sold it to, just like everyone does, if you ever sell it, mate, can you give me first buy back at it? 99% of people never hear of it again, but probably about two years later, we'd moved to Geelong and I got a phone call out of the blue asking me if I wanted to buy it back. Spoke to my wife, we could afford it then, so we decided to buy it back. The paint was in reasonable good condition. It had taken a hit in the driver's side rear panel years and years and years ago, and the bog was starting to crack a bit. The hardest part when we decided to rebuild it was we committed and a closed door paint job turned to pretty much a full restoration. I was, the hardest part was trying to find a panel beater that would do it. I was fortunate enough to come across one here in Geelong who wanted to do it as a project for his apprentice spray painter. So it's actually been painted by an apprentice that had never painted a car before. And the paint that you see it on it today is probably about 12, if not 13 years old, and it's standing up pretty good. Heaps of um, professional panel beaters and spray painters have looked at it, and there's no swirls, there's no orange peel, there's no nothing. It's just a beautiful laid down coat. The actual build uh, probably took about a year, just under a year. We got into it. I had a good mechanic, good auto electrician working on it, and the panel shop was fantastic as well. The engine's a, um, a, worked, a mildly worked 202. It's got a stage four yellow terry head on it. It's got a, uh, a mild cam. When I first did it, I had triple SUs on it, but I upgraded to a set of Webers. So it's got triple Webers hanging off it now. It's got ceramic coated headers, a full stainless exhaust, 
and electric, electric ignition, HR disc brake front end, and a Celica steel case five speed gearbox behind it. The diff is still running a banjo in the rear, 308 ratio, and it sits on 100, just over two grand, and I'll purr along all day. The car as a person means the absolute world to me. Um, due to my time in the military and the stresses of my current employment, it's my out. I can have, be having the worst day mentally. I open the garage door, first of all, I look at it, and then I drive it, and it just takes me to a different place. It takes me to an era that was before I was born. And the smell, the engine noise, you've got to actually drive it. You just can't sit behind the wheel of it and have adaptive cruise control, lane monitoring, do all the work for you and just steer. You've got to drive it, you've got to feel the car. If you don't concentrate for a minute, that'll put you in the gutter. It's got a mind of its own and it demands respect. And as a result, I give it the respect that it deserves and it gives me the satisfaction and the mental health that I deserve as well. Well, when we first got it, going through it, we found hidden under the front seat was the original folder with the service history, the dealer book, the NASCAR accessory book. Flicking through it all, we actually found the original registration receipt with the owner's names on it and how much they paid to register it. Obviously, they're well and truly gone now because it was a deceased estate's car, the dealer's gone. But quite often, I think to them, think to myself, how would they have felt back in 1963, because it's a 63H, unlike a lot of 64s, buying it, driving it home, the kids, mum, waiting for dad to come into the driveway with the brand new EH Holden, which was ahead of its time in the day. You know, they had the EJ, which was a nice car, but the EH, in my opinion, was so much ahead of it. Mum and dad, dad driving into the driveway, the kids coming out, the neighbours looking over the fence and through the windows, and the gentleman across the road with his proud, brand new 1963 EH Special. Couldn't afford the pram, but decided to go one step up on the standard. Special blue collar workers car. The Mini Cooper S is a real classic. It won the Monte Carlo Rally four times, plus the Bathurst 500. For us, it's like the Italian job every time we drive it. You know, Michael Caine racing through the streets of Turin. The good thing is, Shannons really understand our passion. That's why Shannons ensure our classic, our daily drive, and now even our home. Call Shannons on 13 46 46. Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. And of course, if you own a classic, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat, have a discussion about the policy and premium that might suit you best. And to sign up to the Shannon's Club is easy. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Moving through as we do here with Kev on today's show. How are you, mate? I'm well, thanks, Fletch. Yourself? Good, good. What a score this is. Yeah, this is Marge, I like to call her. I was very, very fortunate that I made the right phone call at the right time. The car had sat in Quicksilver and Pacific Fair on the Gold Coast for up to 20 years on level two in the shopping centre. Unstarted, it just sat there. The surf shop here in Geelong closed down and they had a red EK wagon that sat in their shop and there was a big article in the Geelong newspaper saying the car's gonna see the light for the first time in 10 years. All of a sudden my mind goes, that's right, there's a ute on the Gold Coast somewhere. So I got on the Google machine and Googled e -hate, Google Holden Ute Surf Shop Gold Coast and up came Quicksilver with this sitting in the, in the shop. So one thing led to another. I rang the number of, on, the, on the shop and I spoke to the manager. And I said, you still got that ute sitting there? And he goes, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I said, oh, I must be ready. You sold it by now. He goes, how did you know it was for sale? We only decided recently, in fact, within the hour, to part with it and redo the shop. One thing led to another. I said to my wife, I said, any chance of me buying that Quicksilver ute? She goes, yeah, of course you can buy it. And sure enough, a week later, there it is in my driveway. Fantastic. I love hearing these stories. Brilliant. Now, being a coastal car, how was she when you got a hold of her? A bit of rust, no doubt. 
Yeah, look, when it got up on the hoist, it was very disappointing. It needed three floors, it needed um, spring hangers, it needed the passenger side seal done. So hang on, you found it on the second floor, but when you got it, you had to add three floors. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, three floors and a lot of other things. And I kind of decided, oh, what else is going to be wrong with it? Because everything underneath had been tarred over and we didn't know what we were going to find. At that time, I kind of decided I'm going to part ways with it. I'm not going to put the, the dollars into it. When an old, older gentleman who'd been a panel beater all his life in, here in Geelong happened to walk into the workshop and said, I can fix that for you. I'm retiring. It'll be my last one. I started my career on EH Holdens and I'll finish it on one. And he was more than happy and he did the work and here it is. Wonderful stuff. So mechanically, obviously brakes and, and the whole lot had to be done. Uh, engine wise, uh, how did you find that and what have you done there? Well, the engine hadn't been started for a long, long time. So we drained all the fluids out of it, new plugs, new fluids, put the key in and thought, oh, well, what have we got to lose? It cranked twice and fired up a little bit of blue smoke, which burnt off and away she went. So how many times have we heard that story? Battery, bit of fuel down the carby, away they go. Exactly right. We had nothing to lose. And then it got even better because then we started pulling it apart and we found that the, the gearbox had been converted years ago from a manual to an auto, but it had a B&M race shifter. I'm not a drag racer. I don't think that suits the car. So we went one step further and we got a Premier auto steering column and we made it a auto on the column with a Trimatic. We got a auto specialist to come and look into it, brand new gearbox. So things just started getting better and better and better. Disc brake front end. So everything was there yeah. that I would have done if the rust wasn't there. Yeah. So I had to talk to the mechanic that was doing the work on it and we decided, well, I would have spent the money on the engine, the gearbox, the front end. Why not we spend the money on the floor, the sills and the spring hangers? Yeah. And here she is. And seating position's good. You've spent a little bit uh, on the interior as well, Kev. Yeah, the seating position, we it used to buckle when we sat on it. We didn't understand what it was. So we took it to a local lady here in Geelong. She pulled the seat apart and it was all full of timber. And so we put us onto a company in Adelaide that did the um, seat vinyls and the door cards. Mm. My friend here in Geelong, she did the um, redid the springs in the seat. And the seat's all done now. Nice touch under the dashboard, the uh, fastened seat belts. That's, uh, I'd say that'd be a, a pretty rare indicator to get a hold of now. Yeah, I actually went to the gauge company here in Geelong to get a bulb for it, and they'd only ever seen one once in a catalogue. I believe it's an original NASCO um, gauge. Yeah. To think it sat for so many years there in a retail showroom, having a relatively easy life, well, that's continuing now because you've got it, it's a better vehicle than when you found it, and uh, it's an extraordinary story, it really is. Well, people are actually coming up to me saying, I know that car, that car's from the Gold Coast. I was working with a young trainee and we're talking about it, and um, he pulled out his phone and went through his photos, and three years ago there's a photo of him leaning on it <laughs> in Pacific Bear on the Gold Coast. Yeah. We took it down to Bells Beach and all the, the surfers in rubber wetsuits got all excited about it and wanted photos taken in front of it. So it's turned to like an unofficial promotional vehicle. So its journey, even though it's not owned by Quicksilver anymore, continues on. These guys are ex-surfy skeggs in their 60s and 70s that remember this when they were a lot younger too. This is what, it's so nice. Well, exactly right. And... Even though it was on the Gold Coast in Queensland for a lot of years, we all know that Quicksilver was born in Torquay. And it's quite often my wife and I jump in it. We go down to Torquay for an ice cream after dinner and it sits down there down the beach and heaps of people love it. Kev, again, it's been an absolute pleasure. You're more than welcome, Fletch, and I'm really glad you love it. And the blue one as well, of course. Okay. And um, hopefully, never know, maybe a wagon might pop up in the near future. Well, this guy here, a Holden legend, never underestimate the power of the force of what could uh, be the next acquisition. You'll hear the lion roar. <laughs> well, that's it for this week's episode of Classic Restos. Of course, featuring the lovely Katrina with her classics and Holden legend Kev with his two immaculate EHs. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching.
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.